I'm so glad the internet, and in particular social media, wasn't prevalent during the 80s and the 90s when it comes to the American sports landscape. I'm so glad because I wonder how differently I would truly view sports if they were around in those times. Like, I could only imagine the amount of ball washing that would go on for Michael Jordan and the things that he did in the 90s or Bird and Magic in the 80s. And don't get me wrong, I probably would have been right in the mix on a lot of that, especially with Jordan. So you had to know, Game 7, Eastern Conference Finals, it's LeBron versus the Celtics, is the way it's being built. LeBron going to Boston, trying to make it to the Finals for the 8th straight season. Let's be honest, regardless of circumstances, situations, or anything else, Making it to eight straight NBA Finals is a magnificent accomplishment. It is an outstanding accomplishment. You could put qualifiers and asterisks on there, and I will too, but it still does not change the fact fundamentally that the dude has pretty much spent the entire decade in the NBA Finals. That is absolutely remarkable especially when you look at the nature of sports and how hard it can be to be at the top level and stay at the top level and live up to the pressure of expectations. It doesn't matter if he went down to South Beach for one super team, came back to Cleveland for another super team. Eight straight NBA finals with the pressure and burden of expectations merits you some ball washing. No question. And LeBron most certainly deserves ball washing, especially based off of the way he performed in these Eastern Conference Finals against the Celtics. He was outstanding. And in Game 7, in an elimination game, he came through. Big time. One of my frustrations, though, is how the sports world gets so caught up in the here and now. You have this huge recency bias. Now, on the flip side of that, you have this nostalgia bias where everything was always better in the past. Everything was always better 20, 30, 40 damn years ago, no matter what's going on now. And that could be equally as bad. But in this particular case, we are dealing more so with recency bias, getting caught up in the moment, allowing the emotion of what is happening to cloud judgment and better sense and just basic historical facts. And I'm seeing so many people talking about how this is LeBron's single greatest accomplishment. Look, his Cavs team, not that good, went into Game 7 on the road without their second best player in Kevin Love. Yes, he deserves a lot of respect for that. He deserves a lot of admiration for that. There is no question. It is a great accomplishment. Making it to eight straight NBA Finals is a magnificent accomplishment. Making it to a total of now nine total NBA Finals is a huge accomplishment and should be celebrated. But to say this is his greatest accomplishment is just complete and total crap. Never mind the fact that dude's a good husband from every indication we've got. He's like the anti-Dwayne Wade. Every report you seem to see indicates he's a great father. To me, those would be greater accomplishments, especially when you consider who LeBron James is, the pressure that's on him, the landscape that he's in, in terms of his career, in terms of his life. To be able to do those things, those are far greater and significant accomplishments you would think. Becoming a global brand on par close to it with Michael Jordan. Not quite there, but pretty close. That is a massive accomplishment. His bank account, I'm sure he looks at and views as a massive accomplishment. But in terms of on the court, this, this is his single greatest accomplishment? Are you kidding me? He beat a Boston Celtics team and it still took him seven games to do so, taking on Al Horford and a bunch of young guys and role players. To say that is his single greatest on-court achievement 
is a blatant example of the ridiculousness of recency bias. Number two shows how idiotic people are. And number three shows just how little people understand the history of LeBron's career and the NBA as a whole. There is nothing, and again I emphasize absolutely nothing, that indicates that this is his single greatest accomplishment. That is absolutely ridiculous. He beat a team with one kind of star big man, who's more of a wing player than anything now, who's at the tail end of the peak of his career, and young players like Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown, and role players like Marcus Morris and Aaron freaking Baines and Marcus Smart. That type of lineup, no matter how much ball washing you get for Brad Stevens and how great of a coach he is, makes up for the fact that team is not that good. And if anything, you look at it and you would say, the team typically with the best player in the NBA usually will win. Or more often than not, will win. Or has a better chance to win. The Cavs clearly had the best player in the series, so you take your chances with him. And even then, it still took them seven games and they barely got to the NBA Finals. But this is his greatest accomplishment? Excuse the fuck out of me. But I think a couple of years ago, when you're down 3-1 to a Golden State Warriors team that's the defending NBA champions coming off of a 73-win regular season, and you come back from 3-1 and you win, including winning two games on the road in Golden State against a 73-win regular season team that's the defending NBA champions, is far more impressive than beating Al Horford and this ragtag group of role players and young kids. Like, how is that even up for debate or conversation? LeBron brought an NBA championship to the Cleveland Cavaliers. That in and of itself makes it a better moment. That in and of itself makes it a more significant accomplishment and achievement than beating the fucking Celtics to get to the eighth straight NBA Finals. Give me a break. The defending NBA champion Warriors, 73-9 in the regular season, up 3-1. The Cavaliers come back and win, including winning two games in Golden State. And you're going to tell me, you're going to tell me that fucking beating the Celtics this year is more impressive? You're insane. This is where ball washing leads to bullshit. And if we even want to take that away, because you want to make this excuse or that excuse, Draymond was suspended or this or he had Kyrie Irving, okay, fine then let's look back at that 2006-2007 Cavaliers team that was hot, steaming, stinking garbage when LeBron was all of 22 years of age, mind you. 22! And he led a team that most of you can't even name the other four members of the fucking starting five of. He led that team with Larry Hughes, Zadrunas Elgowskis, Sasha Pavlovich, and Drew Gooding. Those were the other four starters, by the way. So at least I know. With great role players such as Booby Gibson and Danielle Marshall and Eric freaking Snow. He led that team up against the Detroit Pistons team that even without Ben Wallace, still had Chauncey Billups, Richard Hamilton, Rasheed Wallace, Tayshawn Prince, a slightly aged but still somewhat productive Chris Webber, role players like Lindsey Hunter and Antonio McDice, he beat those Detroit Pistons that in that decade had won the championship in 2004, made it to Game 7 against the Spurs in 2005, but beating this young, role-playing Boston Celtics team is more impressive? He carried a broken-down, washed-up Zadrunas Elgowskis freaking Sasha Pavlovich and Drew Gooden to the NBA Finals against a quality Pistons team. A quality Pistons team. How soon we forget. Like, how in the hell do you look back and say, he beat those Pistons, and by the way, if I remember correctly, he did it in six games, including that magnificent overtime performance in Game 5, where he just completely took over and dominated, which is still one of the greatest games of his career all these years later. We're going to say now that beating Jalen Brown and freaking Terry Rozier is more impressive than beating a team with Billups Hamilton and Rasheed Wallace? Are you nuts? Are you absolutely insane? 
a LeBron that's over a decade younger, with a worse team around him. But this year, because it's right here, right now, because you got all these idiots from ESPN and the other outlets of the media who have skin in the game to try and advance this narrative about how great LeBron is now and how what he's doing is better than he's ever fucking done before, are sitting there telling you this crap. It doesn't make it true! Like, you look at that. What he did this time. He should have beat the Celtics, and it shouldn't have taken seven freaking games. What he did in 2006-2007 in that Eastern Conference Finals against the Pistons, that was a really good team at his younger stage of his career with the lack of talent he had around him was far more impressive. Give me a fucking break. Beating the Celtics like they are now without Kyrie Irving, without Gordon Hayward, their two best scorers, would be equivalent to that young LeBron in that 2007 Eastern Conference Finals beating the Pistons without Chauncey Billups and Richard Hamilton. It would have been taking on Rasheed Wallace, Tayshaun Prince, and a couple of other role players. Does that help illustrate the point now? Look, this is a great accomplishment. But for anybody, and I mean anybody, to talk about on the court, this is the greatest accomplishment of his career, is absolutely ludicrous, crazy, stupid, and just not based off of historical reality whatsoever. He beat a 73-win Warriors team that were the defending NBA champions after they were down 3-1, to one, and he took fucking Booby Gibson to the damn NBA Finals against a Pistons team that had some really good players, but now beating Jalen Brown and Terry Rozier is more impressive. Fuck you, give me a break.